This is the Huey Cobra, the world's first helicopter specifically designed for the armed helicopter role. It provides the ground soldier the finest direct fire support any army has ever known. question about it. The Huey Cobra is a different breed. Almost everyone who sees the ship for the first time is struck by its slim, clean aerodynamic lines. The first flight quickly confirms the impression of its deadly effectiveness. But in order to fully understand the factors that dictated this design, we must review the evolution of the whole Huey family. For the roots of the AH-1G lie back in 1955. It was that year that the first Huey helicopter flew. This was a utility helicopter designed for the frontline evacuation of casualties. It was wide enough to accommodate litters across the ship for ease of loading. It soon became apparent that the basic Huey design would serve far more missions than just medical evacuation. The family of Hueys we know today was quick to evolve. The XH-40, the UH-1A, B, and D. The UH-1D, with its squad carrying capability, has become the standard troop transport helicopter in Army air mobile operations in Vietnam. And to offer armed support to these troop carrying helicopters, the UH-1B, and later designation of the C with the 540 rotor system, was adapted to the armed helicopter role. Although this new breed of weapon helicopters has proven itself indispensable, there has been a basic compromise in aircraft performance. The addition of various weapon kits substantially increase both drag and weight. This has created the paradox of escort aircraft which have less speed and maneuverability than the troop and cargo carrying vehicles they are to support. The Army realized that the quickest way to achieve a meaningful improvement was to modify the Huey into an integrated weapons configuration. These then were the design parameters of the Huey Cobra. Maximum utilization of operational Huey components, packaged in a shape that would provide the performance and mission effectiveness that combat required. So the Cobra took shape around combat-proven Huey components. The 540 rotor system with its simplified door hinge design. The Army's 1400 shaft horsepower T-53 L-13 turbine engine. And a transmission and tail rotor system which is common to both C and D model Huey helicopters. Tandem seating gives the Cobra the advantages of improved performance due to a slim fuselage and increased combat effectiveness for the pilot-co-pilot gunner team by means of virtually unlimited visibility. In 1963, Bell verified the tactical advantages of tandem seating in their experimental Sioux Scout helicopter. The chin turret and the lift obtained from the wings were also evaluated during the flight test program of this concept aircraft. This prototype embodied the aerodynamic design which the Cobra reflects today. The Huey Cobra speed and maneuverability comes primarily from the greatly decreased aerodynamic drag. The fully armed Huey gunship, with a fuselage 108 inches wide, has a flat plate drag area of up to 35 square feet. The Huey Cobra, with equivalent armament, has less than one-third the drag of its predecessor. This reduction of drag, coupled with the increased horsepower, provides the Huey Cobra with increased airspeed and rate of climb. This will permit the Cobra to arrive in the target area sooner remain there longer 
and carry a greater ordnance load. For the first time, the troop-carrying helicopters of the Army will have an armed escort which can move easily in and around the formation, combining maneuverability with high forward speed for protection of the escorted ships. Closely linked to the Cobra's high-speed performance are the flight characteristics of stability and maneuverability. To utilize its high performance to best tactical advantage, new flight techniques have been developed around the Cobra's unprecedented maneuverability. These return-to-target maneuvers are the helicopter equivalent of fixed-wing acrobatics. When one talks performance, it is only natural to consider the rotor system. The Huey Cobra uses the standard 540 rotor, but the stabilizer bar is gone, replaced by a simple three-axis electronic stability augmentation system. The SAS system is perhaps the key to stability during ordnance firing. These rate-sensing gyros are able to detect changes in aircraft attitude caused by wind gusts, rocket firing, or other external inputs. The SAS system is able to sense attitude changes and make control corrections before the movement is apparent to the pilot. This not only gives inherently better accuracy, but also allows both pilot and gunner to concentrate on the mission during critical firing passes. Armament is, of course, Huey Cobra's reason for existence. The aircraft has been designed with armament a functional part of the entire airframe. The TAT 102H in turret houses a single 7.62 millimeter minigun. Other versions have dual weapon turrets with two 40 millimeter grenade launchers, two miniguns, or one of each. The turret is attached to basic aircraft structure just below the co pilot gunner. Highly directed, flexible fire is possible from the turret through 230 degrees in azimuth, 50 degrees of depression, and 15 to 25 degrees in elevation. Placement of the gunner in front of the pilot offers him unequaled visibility. The gunner normally operates the turret. The pilot normally fires the wing stores. However, the gunner can control wing stores, and the pilot can fire the gun turret when it is in the stowed position firing forward. The forward station also incorporates sidearm flight controls, permitting the co-pilot gunner complete control of the aircraft should the pilot become a casualty. A fully articulated pantograph gun sight with built-in lead compensation is attached to the floor directly above the turret. This relationship of turret and sight minimizes gunnery errors due to parallax or deflection of intervening structure. The gunner has a choice of 1,300 or 4,000 rounds per minute firing rate. For the TAT 102A, the Cobra carries 8,000 rounds of 7.62 ammunition. Palletized ammunition is located in a bay directly behind the chin turret. Access to the ammo bay is provided on both sides of the ship. This affords extremely quick turnaround time, even with a mixed ordnance load. Huey Cobra wing stores are mounted on four hard points. These currently include the XM-18 minigun, the XM-157 2.75-inch folding fin aerial rocket pod with seven rockets, or the XM-159, which contains 19 rockets. These wing stores can be mixed or used in pairs on the hard points, providing a maximum load of 76 rockets. A 20 millimeter installation is under consideration. Crew and aircraft protection has been designed as an integral part of the Cobra, not an afterthought. Pilot and gunner seats are protected by lightweight boron carbide armor panels. The pilot seat is built of steel armor. Critical engine components, the fuel control system and the compressor section have also been protected by armor. The hydraulic boost system has been protected through redundant design. Self-sealing fuel tanks have the ability to seal 50 caliber penetrations in the bottom one-third of the tank. The middle third can resist 30 caliber penetrations. The top one-third is tear-resistant. One of the strongest lessons to come out of Vietnam is the need for improved aircraft survivability. 
Let's consider infrared and the growing arsenal of lethal heat-seeking weapons. For the past decade, the aviation community has emphasized performance, only to realize that the ability to survive in a hostile environment must also be an important design consideration. The Cobra has been designed to meet the weapon threats of this decade. The AH-1G has been designed with a tailpipe recessed within the engine cowling. Air entering the sail provides engine compartment cooling and exhausts through and cools an IR heat shield, reducing the aircraft infrared signature. This IR suppression technique substantially decreases the probabilities of infrared-seeking missiles acquiring the Cobra as a target. The Huey Cobra retains the maintenance ease of the Huey family. No lubrication is required in the Teflon bearing 540 door hinge rotor. Large hinged cowlings provide better than ever access to engine and dynamic systems. Avionics equipment is located in the aft fuselage. All antennas are buried or flush mounted to minimize drag. Most maintenance functions are similar to earlier model Hueys, and the Huey Cobra enjoys the same initial high time between overhaul as other Hueys. These design considerations were not arbitrary, but are the result of extensive constant feedback by Bell representatives in the battle areas of Vietnam. Prior to final design of the Cobra, top management of Bell went to Vietnam to learn from the men who fly Hueys what was needed in an armed assault helicopter. The needs defined by these men show up in the smallest detail of design. Take the emergency ordnance jettison system. The outboard loads are piston driven downward with a force of 1,500 pounds. The inboard stores angled away from the ship with twice the force. It is a small item of hardware yet it could make the critical difference in survivability in many marginal combat situations. And like all forms of insurance, high survivability design considerations buy a sense of security even should they never be used. It would be difficult to conceive of a more extensive test and evaluation program for any aircraft. The wide variety of ordnance has been extensively fired in situations which approximate ultimate combat deployment. The Cobra test program was flown by Army pilots with extensive Vietnam combat experience. The evolution of tactics for this unique helicopter represents the integration of the skills of these men with the expanded capability of this newest member of the Huey family. Currently, production Huey Cobras are rolling off the assembly line to join the battle in Vietnam. In the brief space of less than two years from the start of design effort, the aircraft entered combat. Today, the Huey Cobra backed by a heritage of more than three million air hours chalked up by other members of the Huey family, is in the skies to ease the burden of the army man on the ground. <laughs>